uncontrollable change and all that's unpredictable set a huge trap for ourselves, creating a race in a vicious circle, never turning back to its mournful legacy of self-destruction. I now call out from one to another, it's time that tradition be denied to let a primal wave of passion and true desire be unleashed upon the vicious human cycle, turning it outwards and giving us each the power to manipulate what is to be the destiny of us all. Oh.
Hi. Uh, I saw the, the sign uh, down on the street. It said you're selling uh, rabbits and bunnies here. Yeah. Uh, for sale. You want pets or meat? Uh, pets or meat. You meaning I can I can buy the bunnies to, to have as a pet, or I can buy them for meat. They're already dressed and cleaned. I butcher the babies when the babies reach four or five months old. <laughs> Well, that's good. <laughs> you see, if you butcher the older ones, like these guys, then they're stewers. Mm -hmm. They're not friars. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like friars better yeah. than they do the stewers. Yeah, that makes sense. So I keep my own personal stock, and then when my babies get four or five months old, and I have 15, 20 babies, you got to get rid of them some way. Yeah, that's true. Well, if that's... you don't sell them as pets, you got to get rid of them as meat. These guys are all meat. But see, they start doing this to each other. What's that? Peeing on each other and stuff like that when they get older. And if you don't have uh, 10 separate cages for them, then they start fighting. And then the males will castrate the other males. And if they do, they chew their balls and right off. Then you have a bloody mess. Mm. So that's why you got to butcher them when they get a certain age or you have a heck of a mess. <laughs> What's going to happen to him? He's gonna be eating. <laughs> gonna be our supper on the supper table. What's the matter, huh? <laughs> I don't know. What, what are you guys crying about? How do you slaughter them? Hung them upside down and stripped their fur off. And gutted them. And chopped their heads off. Now you know what I'm talking about.
everything has to do with sex. Admit it. You're a lousy lady and she's learned to accept it. Like they all have. Just sing it. Wait a minute. Do you think I'm a lousy lady? Is that what you're saying? You got it. I'm not the one who complains how tired I am. Getting her to make love is sad. Asking her to run the Boston Marathon. And then most times that we actually do go through with it. I don't know whether to embrace her or embalm her. So don't tell me that I'm a lousy lady. What the hell am I doing here? their best protection for home is is the shotgun short barrel shotgun why is that well it's easy to handle and if you do have to shoot you're not liable to miss and when they hear that uh, pumpkin when you rack that there's no other sound that's like it and usually you don't have to fire it they get go uh, get moving pretty fast yeah. and they'll move away really oh yes no. and they know exactly what you have you don't have to say i have a gun in my hand and they know what it'll do because it'll really tear them up <laughs> Oh, 
request. Yes, there you, is a document you... that came out last year supported by the Defense Department from Monterey who said there's no reason to kick military people that are gay out. It looked at a very, it looked at one facet. Oh. And that was only the security issue. It's the only thing it looked at. That's the main issue, one of the when main issues that the military gives. When you have complaints from issue. large numbers of member, military members, in this case female military members, heterosexuals, that this is something that bothers them, this is something that, that uh, degrades their quality of life, that's a problem. Degrades that's, their quality that's, that's of it. life? That's a problem. Oh, really? You've heard in Oka today subsided almost as quickly as it had heated up just about an hour after the army stopped its advance soldiers looked relaxed calmly going about routine chores establishing their perimeter and they may be here for a while there will be no more military movements on the perimeter Lieutenant General Foster says talks between the Mohawks and the army are going on and he says there is no deadline for working out an agreement. The open line to the lawyers is now being used by Terry Duxbetter. And it remains open. And we are talking. I will not jeopardize his efforts by discussing the subject of those calls. He has no deadline to meet. During the day, there were informal discussions between the Mohawks and the soldiers here. But the main negotiations are going on by telephone before senior officers in Montreal. Most of the day, the two sides here just stared at one another. For now, the army is digging in, securing its position, watching the Mohawks. On the other side of the highway, the Mohawks are watching the army. And both sides are waiting to see what happens in the negotiations. Tony Ross, CBC News, Oka.